let me start by saying that I really like the Steam controller. In my opinion, it's one of the most interesting controllers you can buy. As you can see, I own um, a few controllers, but I have encountered a major problem when it comes to durability. Now, on the left is a functional Steam controller, and on the right is a Steam controller with the broken RB. It might not be so clear on the audio, but it's definitely broken. And hopefully by the end of the video I'll show you how to fix it with just a piece of steel. Even a piece of broken tape measure works just fine. As is tradition, we will start at the beginning. Uh, first of all, just remove the sticker on the back. Obviously this does avoid your warranty, so only do this if you're out of warranty or if you just don't want to deal with Valve customer support. Now after removing the sticker you're gonna need the Torx D6 screwdriver and just remove all of the screws. The good news is only one kind of screwdriver is needed to disassemble the whole controller and if you need some more details on how to disassemble the controller I'll link the iFixit guide in the description. After you remove the screws, just carefully wiggle it apart, watch it fall into pieces, just don't lose any parts here. And after that, all you have is four more torque screws, just to remove the motherboard from the plastic. Make sure to be careful when removing the PCB because there are two small ribbon cables connecting the touchpads with the PCB which you need to remove first. You can see the, the functional button, you still have that small piece of plastic there and on the right side, uh, completely out of focus is the broken piece of plastic, so that's why your controller isn't working. The idea here is to use the existing screw hole and the spare piece of metal to replace the broken piece of plastic. Which is why you can see me disassembling an old tape measure here, from which we will scavenge that piece of spare metal. From experimentation I learned that pretty much any piece of sheet metal in between around 0.15 and 0.3 millimeters will work just fine for this purpose. So just check around the house and see what you have laying around it might work. What you want to do is cut out a piece about 8 millimeters wide. Now the exact dimensions are not very important, especially the length as we'll be cutting it down to size later. Now there is a bit of a problem if we just take a piece of metal as is and try to bend it in over itself. Uh, you'll see that it breaks pretty easily, so we can't use it just yet. In order to get this to work, we're gonna have to heat treat the material, which is easier than it sounds. And just to show you the heat treating better, I'm sanding off a piece of tape here. The heat treated part is in between the two rainbows moving either side and should be much more ductile than the rest of the material. This can be easily verified by just bending it the same way we did before and it not breaking this time. So, excellent! Now that we know the process works, we can repeat it on one side of the actual piece of metal we'll use to repair the controller. No sanding necessary, just heating it up to red hot works fine. Wiping away the burnt paint reveals the same rainbow oxide as before, indicating a sufficient temperature was reached. This is further confirmed when bending the piece over itself does not break it. After the first fold, we must bend it again by 90 degrees to form the final shape.
So hopefully at this point the shape of the metal piece should be starting to make sense. And all seems to fit fairly well, so I'll just trim off the excess piece of metal. There's still a little knob where the plastic piece broke, so just file that away, or even easier, if you got a pair of flush wire cutters, then just clip it off. Hopefully after removing the plastic knob, the metal piece should fit just fine. We still need to drill a hole through the metal piece so we can attach it with a screw. So just mark off the hole position with a marker. We'll use a center punch to mark where the hole is supposed to go. Or, in my case, just punch a hole straight through it. Whoops. Then make sure to securely attach the piece of metal in your hand and drill a 2mm hole through it, or in my case just expand the hole to 2mm. And after you drill the hole just clean it up with a file. Since my piece of metal is fairly thin, I'm making a crease in the middle, so it stiffens it up a little bit. But this part is optional, so just seeing if your piece of metal works well, otherwise bend it a little bit so you get reliable button clicks every time. When you're happy with the shape, just uh, mark it off using the other side as a reference and cut it off using a pair of scissors. Bending the metal piece changes the amount of force needed to push the button, so fiddle around with it a little bit and see what works. Then reassemble, plugging in the ribbon cables first, making sure all of the buttons still work, and then start screwing in the screws. I added a little plastic washer just to hold down the metal piece better. I didn't use it in my other controller and it's still working fine. Uh, if you have some problems you could always use glue but seems to be working all right for me. Um, then just screw it in place like you did with the other four screws. I suggest using the other side as a reference and adjusting the metal piece so both sides have approximately the same feel to them. When you're happy with your final adjustments, reassemble the shoulder button mechanism, trimming the metal piece if need be. And hopefully... And now all that is left to do is watch me slowly reassemble the controller because I haven't figured out how to speed up audio more than four times in Sony Vegas. I also promise that I'll get a less squeaky chair next time I try to record the video. Here's me showing you the controller really does work fine now, and also the reason why six controllers broke in the first place. So hopefully now you know how to fix your controller or just learn something interesting from the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.